Let us have our opening prayer. Today we walk with Jesus to Golgotha. We remember the pain that he suffered. We remember the triumph of his death that didn't look much like triumph to anyone. And today we remember what it really means to say we are taking up our cross and following Jesus. As we move through each phase that Jesus spoke from the cross, we will blow out one of our Lenten candles, which symbolizes the past six Lenten Sundays, and we will have a short time of silence. After Jesus' seventh word, we will share a moment of silence in relative darkness. Come, let us worship together. Our service this morning is a service of word and reflection as we hear the story of Good Friday.
Good morning. <clears throat> Jesus, we come to walk the road with you, to follow you to the cross. We prepare ourselves now to follow your footprints in the dust, to understand how you died, to understand how we die, to understand how you lived, to understand how we should live. A reading from John 19. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the police saw them saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it has been given, given you from above. And therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against Caesar. And when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king! They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed them over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. <clears throat> there they crucified him, and with, and with him two others, one on the other side, with Jesus between them. You forgave even though those who took your hands and feet and drove nails into solid wood, who, straining, lifted up the cross that held you and dropped it into place. You have forgiven them. When we ask for mercy, we are amazed to find that it has already been extended. You have forgiven us. Reading from Luke 23. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing.
In your darkest hour, you turn to reassure the man beside you, a stranger. You extended eternity to him, even as you died. When we suffer, we find your hand extended to us. We find strength in the life you give us. A reading from Luke 23, verses 35 to 43. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him, art, offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There is also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him, saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sense of condemnation? And we, had, we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And he replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. We're going to sing Voices United 133. 133, go to dark Gethsemane.
You turned in your suffering to care for those who cared for you. You turned those you loved toward each other and asked them to give each other the status of family. You have called us your sisters, your brothers. The reading is taken from John 19, verses 19 to 27. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews. But this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple, whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. You were fully human, thirsty as you hung there in the hot sun. You felt the urgent need of a parched throat and a dry tongue. You have quenched our thirst with your living water. From John 19. After this, When Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. You were abandoned by God, alone in your suffering. You withstood what we could not and promised to never leave or forsake us. From the book of Mark. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, 
Lama Sabakdathani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me?
When can I get well from this sickness? By when or will I ever become debt free? When can I smile again? Can I leave worry free? Do you ever feel that you cannot get it all done in life? Can finish it all? Not enough time, not enough energy, not enough of too many things. The truth is, if we go out of the church door, it's not easy to see or realize that this world we live in is filled with unfinished work, unfinished jobs, unfinished tasks, unfinished medical treatment, the list goes on and on. When are they going to finish this? When will I finish this? There's so many things remaining unfinished. And if we see so many unfinished tasks, unfinished things in life, we come up with this statement, I give up. A lot of things will go remain unfinished. We will die. You and I will die with unfinished business in our lives. When everything seems not okay, according to all the readings we have just covered from different voices, and not only that, this lantern journey that we have come together up until this point, a lot of scripture readings, according to the Bible, nothing seems right. Nothing seems right, yet this one person in all of history, Bible records, he says, it is finished. Scholars agree that it's not a cry of defeat. It is not, I give up. It is not, I'm tired. It is not, I'm wearing out of my life. That kind of declaration. Some say it is in Greek word, tetelestai. Tetelestai, which means completed, paid in full, <coughs> sold, perfect. But that, that even raises our question, what do you mean by then? When nothing is finished, nothing is right, Nothing is completed. Nothing has been paid in full. Nothing has been sold. Nothing is perfect. But you said it is finished. So 
So what did Jesus actually finish? One theological perspective is um, Jesus took all of our sins and my sins and your sins and God laid it on Jesus on the cross, at the cross. And Jesus cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And that was actually the first time Jesus ever addressed God as his own father in the scripture. Why? Because Jesus was standing in the place of sinner so that you and I can cry instead, my father, my father, why have you so blessed me? They asked that Jesus prove that you are the son of God, Pontius Pilate. And Jesus said, destroy this temple, I'll raise it again in three days. They didn't understand. I must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things and be killed, and on the third day I'll be raised to life. They couldn't understand. And one time, even one of the disciples, Peter, tried to change the course. That's not going to happen. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Nothing is right. Nothing seems right. No one could say it is finished. No theologian, no minister, no believer, no politician. Nobody could say finished. But Jesus said it is finished. The more we read the scripture, the more we realize, at least my perspective, is that my question has changed from why did God let this happen to when are you going to finish all of this? If you are a believer, you cannot say it is finished. But Jesus said, it is finished. So we are in that uh, mode of contradiction today. While nothing seems right, Jesus said, It is finished. These are the scripture. These are the words of God. These are the words of Jesus Christ on the cross. At the Calvary, Jesus said, Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Dear woman, here is your son. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I thirst, it is finished. Father, into your hands I commit myself, I commit my spirit. As always, as always, to the very last moment, to the very last moment, to the very last moment. Jesus was thinking about others. It wasn't finished to my perspective. It wasn't complete to our perspective. No one could understand. But to Jesus, it was finished. 
to Jesus alone, it was complete. To Jesus alone, it was perfect. Amen. <laughs> Let us sing, Voice United, hymn number 144. Were you there? Hymn number 144.
Let us pray the Good Friday prayer. After all, after everything, after the pain, the rejection, the sorrow, you entrusted your spirit to your Heavenly Father. Although you felt the forsakenness of sin in its fullest, you trusted you, Father. Now, you entrust us to your Heavenly Father, sitting at the right hand, interceding for us. The curtain was torn. Our separation from God is ended in this moment. May we trust in the darkness, the existence of the consciousness. May we trust ourselves to you. In a moment, as we blow out the Christ candle, I'll ask you to take a moment of silence together and to feel the weight of Christ's sacrifice, of the Father's sacrifice. As we sit in silence and as we sit in the dark, we'll also fill our hearts with stillness as we seek to understand the cross, as we seek to take up our own cross. Lord Jesus, we ask you to teach us to understand this great and terrible mystery. Our closing hymn. Voice United 149, when I survey the wondrous cross, hymn number 149. Gospel chapter 23 verses 44 it was Friday it was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until 3 in the afternoon while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two 
Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I command my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit 